Welcome to another Rotterdam White Scarf video. My name is Thijs, aka The Shame Painter, and today we'll get some dragons involved. It will be Daenerys Stormborn um, from the Song of Ice and Fire Minja game, and I will be showing you how I painted her up and what kind of tips I can give you so you can paint up your version as well. Let's get started with this Targaryen painting tutorial. So, this will be the final result. Um, it's one of my most favorite uh, miniatures from the series. I think it uh, works out pretty well um, in the end. So if you want to be able to paint this miniature just like this, uh, keep on watching and I'll show you all the tips and tricks I have when it comes to uh, painting this miniature. So first up, I uh, didn't have to assemble this miniature because uh, Daenerys comes uh, all uh, assembled in the set, just like any other Song of Ice Fire miniature. You do have to clean up some mold lines here and there. And then what I did was first I sprayed some black spray, uh, Chaos Black from uh, Games Workshop and then uh, Zenith Highlight of uh, Corex White, which gives a lot of definition and shows you where the, the highlights and shadows uh, on the miniature are. And we, I first started off with some Cadian Flesh Tone, which is, uh, a, it's not as light as Kislev Flesh. Uh, it's not as uh, uh, dark as a Buckman's Glow, for example. Um, you could also translate it as a human flesh, a human flesh tone. I covered the model with a, a, with a, a thin down a layer once or twice, especially on the parts where there's a lot of black showing and it's uh, good to do a, a second, uh, second layer. Um, there's a lot of skin showing. Uh, one of the things that I like about this model the most is that there's a lot of skin showing but also a lot of detail covering the skin. For example the arm straps and uh, the boots but the face is pretty visible so what I did first was uh, I uh, after the, the entire uh, model has dried and the, the, the layer is completely dry uh, I started mixing in some Druchi Violet across the entire model and uh, that's a, a shade color and uh, the reason why I use Druchi Violet is because Druchi Violet is a, um, yeah, it's a purple tone of course, but uh, the purple shows a lot of vividness in a, in a model and it gives a more of a realistic uh, view. Uh, for example, if you have bruises, your skin will, uh, will uh, contain more blood and it will show a purplish color or greenish color. And also your veins are more blue-purple color in, in real life. So uh, it also shows that when you have a, a little bit of blush on your face, it's also more reddish-purple and it's not necessarily orange or uh, more skin toned. Um, I did mix in a bit of Riken flesh shade here and there to, uh, to give some variety in the skin. And also to not exaggerate the, the purple too much. Especially on female faces, it's really uh, you have to be really careful that you don't overshade the model because it then becomes like a lot of eyeliner and uh, a lot of black spots. And because the female face uh, is a bit more uh, is a bit less exaggerated on miniatures than uh, than a male uh, face, for example. You don't have the, the eyebrow ridge or the, the knuckled nose or the the, you know, the, the big chin and the, the, the big cheeks. It's more uh, of a soft, uh, softer uh, sculpture. So that's why you have to be a bit more careful with shading the face. So what I did then is just took my time and completely painted back the model with uh, some Cadian Flesh Tone. And made sure that I still left a, a lot of shade visible because I love the transition between uh, the shadow and uh, and uh, the, the highlighted, the layered uh, place on the, on the model. Uh, again, with, uh, with with female figurines, it's always a, a bit better to show. A, yeah, it, it's it's a bit harder to balance the, the contrast between having a flat surface and having a shadow in there um, because there's le less uh, muscle showing. And if you have a warrior model or like a barbarian model, there's a lot of muscle showing, like a Hulk model. So it's really easy to, to pinpoint all the highlights. But in this case, you have to really have to take your time and, and it's easy. It's quite a lot easier to overdo the, the layers than to uh, underdo them. Um, so 
I layered in um, some really thin down uh, Ungor flesh, which is a beastman color, but it's a more uh, yellowish uh, tanned color because I wanted to give uh, Daenerys a bit of Arabic uh, feel, more, more uh, from the Middle Eastern feel, for example, uh, because he, uh, this, this model is actually from the desert with Khal Drogo, so uh, I, would, I would want to give her a more uh, sun tanned uh, look. Um, otherwise I would have also started with Rakat Flesh for example, which is more like a pale flesh tone. Uh, that, that it is something that we will, uh, will later on uh, also apply to this model, is a layer called Flade, Flade One Flesh. But uh, giving the yellowish um, tone in the intermediate layer is a really good way to, uh, to make sure that your flesh looks uh, lifelike and uh, is a really natural skin tone. Um, I always, uh, well, when I try to, uh, when I add purple in my shades, I always want to complement that with a bit of yellow. So you have the, the blue and the yellowish tone that uh, really, uh, yellow and purple are complementary of course, and also bring out uh, the contrast, not necessarily in a dark and light way, a bit uh, it does actually, because purple is more of a black color and yellow is more of a white color. But it helps a lot with uh, bringing in the vividness into the, into the model and into the skin tones. Please don't exaggerate this um, and never use the yellow layer as your last layer, otherwise you will get a caricature of, uh, of an Asian uh, skin tone or uh, a bit more like, uh, can also be a bit more unnatural. So you always have to finish up with, with uh, a na na natural tone and for this case I used the Flate One Flash. Uh, Flate One Flash is a really natural tone it's a really uh, bright skin color and it has a, a lot of whites in it and it has doesn't ha necessarily have a lot of red, red tones or yellow tones or orange tones or even purple tones uh, it's a quite neutral color so that's why i ended with uh, the flate one flesh to neutralize the purple and the yellow tones from the druchy violet shade and also the the ungor flesh layer I think uh, this worked out pretty well. Um, well, here I start out with the eyes. And actually, uh, before I started the eyes, I want to give a bit of an edge around the eyes. So I used a bit of Doombull Brown, which is reddish brown, which also uh, simulates the, the layers around, around the eyes and the, the eyelids, for example. Uh, and then to, to give the, a bit more white tones into the, uh, to the eyes, I gave uh, two dots. I put two dots of Ultron Grey, which is more like two stripes of Ultron Grey in the, in the eye sockets, but leaving a, a little uh, edge of uh, Doomball Brown still visible to give the impression of the eyelid. It's an easy trick to, uh, to make sure that you uh, get the correct uh, size of, of eyes as well. And what I did with the Doombull Brown, I watered it down a lot, so that way it's a lot easier to uh, to showcase where you have to put uh, the Ulthan Grey uh, dots. So next up, I added in a bit of Elysian Grey, because I want to give some green eyes. I covered most of the um, most of the inner parts of the of the Ulthan Grey, putting a little bit of a circle. It's a bit tight. Really, is a tidy job to do, but. Practice makes perfect, uh, as they always say, and this is also some 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 technique that you can't really um, get right the first time, unless you're lucky, of course. But it's something that you have to uh, to keep on practicing. So uh, uh, practice on those warrior models or those uh, core troops or generic uh, uh, models, and not necessarily on your heroes. I wouldn't advise that at all. Video was a bit blurry here because I had to focus a lot on the, the miniature painting instead of the filming. So my apologies for that. Uh, I think this video uh, is really a step up from the last one. So I really, uh, I really liked filming this one as well. Uh, and I also ended up with a bit of too much of Ulthan Grey, but I reworked uh, uh, some bits of that so uh, it's not you know, yeah you can always fix your mistakes in this part add in a bit more doomball brown water down a lot making sure it's all fixed and now i added in a bit of uh, 
of black uh, paint in the middle to create uh, the eyes, the pupils. So next up was the hair. Uh, painting up the hair is, uh, I use Morgas brown of Morgas uh, bone, which is a bone color, but it is also quite a yellowish bone color. Uh, base layer from a Citadel. Game Workshop is, all paints are from Game Workshop except for the metallics in this tutorial. Uh, which you can see it doesn't cover at all. So I had to do a couple layers to make sure it was all uh, all fixed. And then used some uh, sepia, seraphim sepia, sepia shade to bring out uh, the blond blondness uh, even more. Although uh, the nares in the movies of course is a bit more, plat a bit more platinum blonde, but uh, don't worry, we'll get there in a moment. Um, because uh, even though uh, platinum blonde is more of a bleached blonde because of the sunlight, so what we did was first create a natural blonde look with the Morgas brown, Morgas uh, bone, and the seraphim sepia, and now we're gonna repaint uh, the, uh, all the strains of hair with um, the Morgas bone again to uh, reduce the, the, the brownness of the of the hair and also making sure that there's a good layer to uh, to to work in uh, the rest of the, the platinum parts because my personal taste is that, that this is too too much yellow it's a great color to work with with uh, with viking models for example but uh, we want to have the platinum blonde look so what i did next was use some Ultraman gray which is a bluish uh, gray tone which is works really well for natural uh, natural textures and what you see here that it's also really easy to create that platinum blonde look by giving a good highlight covering a lot of parts of the Morgas bone and keeping a sharp edge in the middle of the hair because it, it looks cool the transition from the dark to, uh, to light and also a little uh, bun at the back of the head, uh, make sure it, because it sticks out, it will be bleached a lot more than uh, than the rest of the hair parts. I, th I thought that was a really uh, cool way to do do her hair, and also give the the different uh, color textures uh, from yellow to uh, all the way to bluish white to uh, to really make uh, the hair pop on the model, and not be just uh, some ordinary uh, piece of hair. The next up, the underclothing. We will start with uh, covering uh, some parts of the, the underclothing with uh, Dark Reaper. I'm using Steel Legion for the for the outer uh, uh, dress, and also Steel Legion Drap for the uh, for the boots. I decided to not do the uh, also do the, the the top of the of the garment uh, with steel legion wrap but what I decided not to do was covering all the, the leather parts and the straps on our arms and on the uh, on, on the waist with, with this color because it will be too bland especially with uh, with the, the same tones of, of yellow brown in the, in the hair and also a bit it's, it's a bit of a flesh tone as well steel legion wrap but it's a cool neutral color to uh, uh, to give a bit more comfort into the model because later on on the dark reaper parts you want to do some texture uh, uh, texture techniques as well to give a rough texture idea of, of linen so this will be a great start to uh, to neutralize the model and uh, to not lose focus on the face and uh, and the expression on the model um, so the rest of the so when all the parts are dry you can see the steel drips just dry enough to apply the shade and we applied some Agrax Earthshade uh, on the model. Make sure that you don't cover the, uh, the skin parts because the skin parts are really finesse, as I told before. So please be careful that you don't cover that uh, with some Agrax Earthshade because Agrax can be quite brutal when it, uh, it's covering uh, skin. So first up, we really thin down the Steel Legion Drap and just carefully repaint and rebase, um, reapply the base layer on the most of the parts of the of, of the rope. We're gonna do some cool layers on this as well. So we, uh, it's gonna be classic uh, Steel Legion drap uh, color scheme. 
So that means uh, from Steel Legion Drab, Arax Earthshade, Repainter Steel Legion Drab, coming back with uh, Talon uh, Sand and also Carrick Stone. And this will be a really cool combination on the on the model because it's uh, these three paints, the Steel Legion Drab, the Talon Sand and Carrick Stone are made for each other. They're also the official uh, three steps in the, in, the, in the color guide of Games Workshop. So it's uh, it's a natural good fit and it gives uh, quite a cool sandy uh, desert feeling. And that's, it's also a great, th these three colors are really easy to blend into each other. They're so naturally adapted to each other. It's, uh, it's a lot easier than uh, reddish tones or uh, yellowish tones. tones. These, are, uh, these should <laughs> be a lot easier than uh, your normal color scheme. So slowly painting some talent sand into the model which is a bit more yellow but don't be uh, afraid of the yellow because when it dries it dries a lot more natural than the yellow stones that you see right here and apply several layers so work from the from small parts you can always add some more color but you can't really remove any color in this uh, step so work in small sections of your model and ju just apply gentle layers and make sure that you don't Uh, make sure that you don't uh, f forget some parts and, and j just take your time. Just take your time. So the final layer is some Carrick Stone, which is a grayish stone color, but it, uh, it has the natural browns in it as well. And this is just the perfect match and it, it gives a great, great transition and contrast between the Steel Legion Drab, the Talon Sand and the Carrick Stone. As you can see here, it, it brings out a lot of that. Yeah, it, it diffuses a lot of the yellow in the talent sand, which I think is great. Because you still got the color transition from the brown to the yellow to the gray, grayish uh, brown. So I think this is a perfect uh, way to, uh, to paint your model. Uh, uh, especially with, uh, with sand tribes, desert tribes or... Uh, yeah, it's perfect. So coming back with uh, uh, the Dark Reaper parts, what I did was some uh, Fenrisian Grey. I did repaint the model a bit with Dark Reaper, but then stripe or uh, stipple uh, your pattern. And uh, this takes a lot of concentration. So do if you don't uh, are not able to uh, hold your concentration for as long uh, uh, as it takes, uh, take a break. That's <laughs> a great. <laughs> I think that. That advice I wanted uh, a bit sooner than later, but take a break and just stipple down some Fenrisian Grey and finish up with um, some Uthron Grey. And I did some stripes with Fenrisian Grey and then I stippled the Uthron Grey only on the edges to really create uh, the effect that I wanted to. And I wanted to have a bit of a rough cloth texture because of the desert tribe uh, that she's in right now. And I want to give a bit of a rough feeling, a bit of linen or wool or uh, yeah, S something not made in a big city. It, it's probably made in in a, in, a, in a bazaar or a tent or um, along the road. It, it's not as refined as you would find in King's Landing, for example. It does have the natural dyed colors. So a dark reaper is also quite a natural blue color. It's not um, lavish purple or or. or Royal, royal red, or, or Kingsman blue. It, it's 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 quite a natural color. So, it, but it still gives a bit more detail to the model than just having all the brown tones in there. So next up is painting all the leather parts with Katashian flesh. Be really careful with uh, the straps on their arms because those are uh, quite thin. And it's really hard to pinpoint where they actually are, what parts are flesh, what parts are uh, a different color. And then it's some grayish uh, fur liner on the on the edge of the ropes. I thought the gray fur was uh, was perfect, also, also a neutral color and also complementary to the yellow because of the blue and yellow tones. And I used Mechanica Standard Gray for this, which in my opinion is just, uh, yeah, it's just, just a dark gray color. It has no blue tones in it. It's a really natural color. Um, although we have multiple uh, 
uh, multiple uh, color choices right here from gray to yellow to brown to blue it's it's not a uh, really hectic it's, it's still uh, really balanced uh, across the model because of all the neutral tones and I use some Agrax Earthshade again to uh, to make sure that uh, there's a little bit of shadow in these parts and then start to repaint and just stipple uh, the fur parts with some Mechanica Standard Grey just, ke just keep on uh, stippling around making sure that every uh, every bit of little little piece of fur is uh, is covered these are always the fun parts they like the framing of the of the, of the picture when once you finish these parts these parts will uh, make or break your model and it's really easy to make it with uh, with this and then uh, coming back with some uh, dawnstone to create a, a bit more uh, highlight and then uh, in the end we want to finish up with uh, the, the natural last step and which is administratum grey which isn't too bright it isn't like a white color it, it's just it's a really bland grey but we don't want to exaggerate this model because of the we don't want to uh, distract the viewer from the, the face and the, the platinum blonde hair so dimming this part down with, um, is perfectly fine Especially when you have a lot of texture on the blue parts with the dark reaper and the, the striping, it isn't necessary to go all out uh, with uh, with the fur. It's just a minor detail that just has to be neat. It has to be neat, tidy, and done well. But it doesn't doesn't need any extra. Yeah, doesn't need anything extra. Let me say it that way. So keeping it simple here will, will uh, help out the model a lot. It's also the reason we didn't do anything, any special tricks on the on the outside of the ropes with the Steel Legion Drap. We want to keep that as simple as well. Because we already have the, the, the l a lot of contrast in the, in the skin colors, a lot of contrast in the hair, uh, special effects on the blue parts. It's okay, sometimes enough is enough. If you have a lot of tricks up your sleeve, you have to be uh, balancing them out with uh, some simple parts, simple but effective parts. So come back with the brown, repaint it all with uh, Katashian Flesh. And then uh, add a layer of Blood Reaver Flesh. Uh, what we'll, and then uh, finishing up with some uh, also sun bleached uh, ideas with, uh, with Bane Blade Brown, which is a more uh, yeah, sand uh, tone as well, because we also want to show it's maybe a bit of old old leather part also same with the fur make sure it's all neat and tidy and it doesn't have to be 100% uh, perfect now there are some gold medallions on this model which are really hard to see but I thought there would be more like a bronze primitive uh, feature so I started out with the Vallejo bronze And they're coming in with some cableite green to really show them uh, that, that, that the bronze medallions are uh, oxidized. And uh, the cableite green was watered down one to four. So four parts water, one part the cableite green. As you can see, it's a bit too much right now. So I added in some, uh, some Vallejo gold, old gold to be exact. And added a little dot of silver. Uh, on the end as well so uh, that way you have a lot of sheen because it's rubbing against the clothing but you also have the oxidation with the cable light green and I think it worked out uh, pretty well in the end it's a tough model to paint guys so uh, so good luck when you paint yours I'm really curious what you th thought about this uh, tutorial and this will be uh, the end result thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did uh, painting this model uh, please consider subscribing and uh, liking this video as well. It really helps out uh, uh, our channel and uh, we really, really appreciate it. And if you want to uh, support the channel even more, uh, you can also uh, consider uh, joining our Patreon. And um, yeah, thanks again and uh, see you next time.